I've been a featured creator in YouTube Rewind for the last two years, both in 2016 and 2017, but I've made the decision to not partake in YouTube Rewind 2018 next year. And these are my reasons why. Before I actually get into these reasons, I do just want to state I am anticipating a massive backlash over this video, okay, because I don't think there is any way that I could carefully word this without sounding a little bit entitled, a little bit arrogant, okay? Some of these things are completely selfish, so I'm, I'm ready for the comments. All I would ask is that you perhaps try and sit through this whole thing before letting me know that I'm a piece of shit. If you still think I'm a piece of shit after watching it, then by all means open season, okay? But to put it really shortly, YouTube Rewind is the most self-serving, unprofessional, ill-judged piece of shit that YouTube could ever come up with. This year in particular was absolute shit for personal reasons and also just the content of the video was terrible. I'm gonna split my reasons into two different sections. Firstly, I'm gonna start with my thoughts on this year's YouTube Rewind as a creator. And secondly, I'm gonna give you guys my experience of being on the set of YouTube Rewind for the last two years. Spoiler, it fucking sucked. Personally, in my opinion, I think the last good YouTube Rewind was 2014. Not only because it had different YouTubers of different sub-ranges, but also because it just didn't feel oversaturated. It didn't feel like YouTube was trying to cram thousands of people into seven minutes, which is exactly what they did this year. Now, YouTube has obviously exploded exponentially in popularity, okay? I think in 2014, I think Felix said like a, a dozen channels had a million subscribers and now it's, I think it's over like 2000 or something stupid like that. It, it's, it's, it's blown up. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you have to try and cram a different millionaire in every fucking frame. Obviously they want to showcase the biggest YouTubers from around the world. Okay, cool. The problem with that is that people from different continents are saying, I don't know who this is. I don't know who that is. You're just showing people 2,000 rich kids. Great. You want to know a simple solution that would make YouTube Rewind amazing next year? You can have it for free. I don't mind giving you this gift. Make regional rewinds. Have a YouTube Rewind US. Have a YouTube Rewind UK or Europe or Asia or India or Australia or fucking Antarctica. Do different videos. You have the money, you have the budget. It means you can give more screen time to those specific creators. You can use songs that aren't just fucking Despacito, okay? You can use songs that are actually popular in those continents. And like, I guess you could argue, well, Emma, isn't this just dividing people? No, it's giving your creators more screen time, it's giving them a spotlight. You have the money, you have the capability, and people will be happier. There you go. <music> this point doesn't really work with the last point. I'm aware of that. Quite frankly, if you're a small creator, no, actually scrap that. If you're not Liza Koshy or Jake Paul, YouTube doesn't give a fuck about you. Doesn't give a fuck about me. Doesn't give a fuck about Tom Scar, PewDiePie, Marzia, PJ. It doesn't give a fuck about you unless you have TV potential, okay? 2014 was Last Good Rewind. I know I've already said that, but basically, if you look at the part where like Felix jumps through the roof and then it goes into like this classroom, that's the UK community in there. You've got Luke, you've got Dodie. I'm pretty sure Nikki and Sammy were there. People of different sub ranges, under a million. Some of them, I think Dodie had like 200K. I think Luke had like 400K. It felt way more about specific communities like the UK community or the US community. Now it's just like, let's just cram all these people who don't like each other into the same shot and have them throw slime at each other. Woo! Where was Ashens who uploads amazing comedy content? Uh, where was Dan Nerdcube who was uploading daily until YouTube's demonetization literally drove him to fucking therapy? Where's his reward for getting through all of this bullshit? The gaming community can pretty much go fuck itself in YouTube's mind, right? Quite frankly, if you have under a million subscribers and got into YouTube Rewind this year, it was probably a fluke because it's just 
big creators. And this is my main message to you. Uh, if you are a small creator, if this is how they treat big creators, cramming them all into like one specific shot in order to get all of them together uh, just for the gifts, if that's what they treat the large creators like, what do you think they think about you? Simple. They don't think about you. <music> I want to get very, very specific on this point. Um, this is actually, believe it or not, a reference to a viral video. It was done terribly, but it is actually supposed to be a reference to uh, the news reporter on the BBC who had, like, the kid walk in. You remember that thing? Anyway, the opening shot of YouTube Rewind 2017 was a TV show host. Well done, Susan, you got your fucking wet dream. What's his name? Stephen Colbert, is it, is it John? I don't fucking know who it is because I don't, I don't really watch TV. I know that he's on TV and he has a YouTube channel, just like Jimmy Fallon, just like Jimmy Kimmel, just like Ellen, the people that YouTube actually push. I think it says a lot about the direction that YouTube has been crashing into over the last two years, where they open Rewind with a TV show host. And Liza Koshy. Obviously. I... I kind of get why they thought this was a good thing to put in. I can see how they naively went, this is a really nice message of peace, come by I get it. But if you take a step back out of your arrogant fucking bubble, you can see why this was just the worst fucking thing to put in the video. A message of hope and unity, because YouTube is obviously the breeding ground for peace and love and respect and a place where we can all stand up against all these wars and racism and terrorism. Not only was the placement really weird, they just slung it in the middle and then just replaced it with a fidget spinner straight away like it was just a brief message and then, oh, back to memes. It's just funny that this is a website that has literally had reports of people being fucking radicalized. Like, essentially, if you really want to push it, YouTube is the reason that some people have been murdered. Which is fucking abhorrent. Um, and, and it feels like this was kind of almost like an open statement to the press and to the media. You know, we don't stand for this, we don't stand for all this intolerance, we don't stand for hate speech and terrorism. You do a fucking terrible job, okay? Not only are you not really censoring these videos, you're censoring people like us who aren't doing anything wrong! I feel like the way that you should have properly done it was to sit Susan down with a fucking webcam and go, I'm sorry that I fucked up this entire website and not done a good job at censoring radicalization videos and this might have led to the murder of many people. Whoops! That would have probably had more meaning and probably would have gone down better. But hey, let's all hold hands and then go back to fidget spinners. Whee! So as I said, um, I've been in the uh, UK community section of the YouTube Rewind videos for the last two years, 2016 and 2017. Now, before I get onto this section, I, uh, another disclaimer, I wanna state that uh, they had the same director in 2016 and 2017 for the UK part, and I got on with him so well. He is a lovely, lovely person. We, we talked about North Korea and he lent me his coat and it was wonderful, okay? However, being in it both years, I noticed a lot of things that made the cast feel very underappreciated. Things that really lowered morale on set. You're gonna have YouTubers say, oh, it was so much fun being in YouTube Rewind. The chances are they're probably bullshitting, uh, especially if it's in the UK. Maybe in sunny LA, it's different. I don't know. In 2016, the UK location was in London. It was a construction site out in the open. Not sure how it passed health and safety tests, but it did. If you look very closely, that blur that's me! And you can also see me here for a brief second as KSI's backup dancer. Thank you very much. In 2017, if you look very closely and maybe don't blink. Oh! Did you see did you see it? That that that, that that's me! That's me! I made it! Mom, I'm famous! 2017 was filmed uh, at an all-boys school in London. Both shoots were 
outdoor shoots. Uh, <laughs> oh, we had fun. We did not have fun. That was a lie. It sucked. So I just want to state that obviously I know that all film shoots, whether it's a short film, uh, a Hollywood movie, or you to rewind, I know that there are always massive waiting times because you're not the only person being filmed, okay? Uh, you have to wait your turn. I understand that. There is always more waiting than there is actual filming. That's always the case. It's not YouTube exclusive. However, nobody on YouTube Rewind was there because they were a budding actor in LA desperate to make it and see their name in lights. No one was there, you know, just to be a background extra. We were all there because we've basically been conditioned to believe that YouTube Rewind is a massive privilege, that we should feel honored to be a part of it, which seemingly justifies the long hours standing around in the freezing cold unpaid. <laughs> I guess. More on that later. So the first year was middle of October 2016, and this year was the beginning of November. Don't know if you've been to the UK, but it's pretty fucking cold, Ben. I actually went back and looked it up. Last year, uh, middle of October, it was around 11 degrees Celsius in the morning at like 8.45 when I was due to be on set. It felt like maybe three degrees. You could see your breath in the air. So let's talk about the first year. Um, Got in the car uh, that YouTube paid for. Just, you know, uh, I can't take that away from them. They did pay for my transport. I don't think they paid for many people's transport, but they did pay for mine. Got in the car at like half six in the morning. Got there for about, I think like quarter past eight. I was due to be on set at 8.45. And I remember turning up early because traffic was really, really good. I turn up on set. Um, I go to wardrobe where they're like, here, have some ugly black jeans and some ill-fitting boots. And you're gonna be wearing just a shirt. Just, no, it's October, but just, just a shirt. Got dressed, they did my face, kind of well, I guess. And then, booted out, you know, out, out of wardrobe, you know, moving on, on your own. Um, and then, and then pretty much we were all just left standing around waiting for our part. Now, I actually had to pretty much, uh, offer up my services to be in uh, in other shoots, in other parts of the shoot, because I was so mind-numbingly bored waiting for my part. Like, I didn't have to film anything until like half two, three. So why I had to be there at 8.45, I don't fucking know. But it was my first year and I was excited. I was like, okay, this is great. I'm gonna be in YouTube Rewind. I'm gonna get my moment. Everyone's gonna recognize me. It's gonna be great. Um, and it was just, a really difficult day. It was like a nine, 10 hour day, uh, just out in the freezing cold. Now, you could say, Emma, everyone works out in the cold, okay? People have real jobs, you know? They work nine, 10 hours on their feet in the cold. I know, I've done that too, but every real job I've had, I've been paid for it. Again, more on that later, I think. Morale was, pretty low. During the uh, dance part, where you see me for at least two frames, I was uh, the backup dancer for KSI and Casper, who, can I just say, uh, were absolutely lovely and really professional and very sweet as well. And they just nailed it. Every single take, they did it perfectly. But for some reason, we had to get it again and again and for safety and from this angle and from that angle. I felt like maybe YouTube, the higher ups were you know, telling our director, get every angle, get as much as you can, only for them to use maybe like one and a half, two seconds of a three hour shoot, you know? It's rough. Oh yeah, Emma, poor you. You know, being a YouTuber, it's so hard. You have, you have it so difficult, Emma. You had to do one day of actual labor. Nobody, whether you're in Hollywood, whether you're working at a drive-thru at a fast food restaurant, whether you're on a YouTube shoot, Nobody should have low morale when they work. Nobody, nobody should be made to feel undervalued and like, you know, you're just a gif or you're just a tweet for YouTube Rewind. And that's definitely how a lot of people on that shoot felt. And I can tell you, there were so many people on that shoot who I won't name, who were also very frustrated and very annoyed and very exhausted and very cold. Um, my manager, who is very, he's lovely, but he's very quick to call out if I'm being an egotistical brat. You know, he will say, Emma, you're being a fucking entitled asshole. Even he was saying, this is ridiculous. We've been here for so long. Everyone is fed up. Um, he was bored out of his mind. I was bored out of my mind. Everyone was just fed up. So let's talk about 2017, right? Emma, if it sucked that much, why did you go back? 
Why did you do it another year? What's fucking wrong with you? Because last year sucked so much, uh, and because this year has been like a really, really like cool, important year for me with the Apple Music thing and, you know, writing and releasing my own book and doing a tour, because it's been such an amazing year, we went back to YouTube and said, hey, uh, thanks for inviting us to come back this year. Um, Emma would love to take part. Uh, we, we would just like clarification that maybe this year things are easier, you know, um, the, 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 uh, the shoot will be quicker and that Emma will get more screen time. I'm not that petty about screen time, okay? Uh, I'm not saying I should have been like the big focus. I was one of the smallest people on YouTube Rewind, okay? 1.4 million subscribers is not that big anymore. Um, so I get, I get that I, I don't get like a massive feature. I understand that. Uh, but I think anyone uh, of any size, if they were on set for like 10 hours in the freezing cold, filming for like three hours, doing the same dance over and over again, I think if they got like two or three frames in the video, they'd be pissed off too. You know, it doesn't matter if you're big or small, that would infuriate anybody. We got an email back from YouTube saying, hey, yeah, Emma's had an amazing year. Uh, we promise that Emma is gonna get a frontal shot of her pouring slime on herself. It's gonna be amazing. She's gonna be front and center. And we were like, great. This is all, this is all I wanted. I just, I just, my little arrogant self, you know, all I wanted was my moment. So 2017 for the UK was set at an all boys school. At least I think it was. It was, it was some sort of boarding school anyway, in London. Again, it was another um, early shoot. It was like, you know, turn up at like nine o'clock, I think for me this time. There were people who had been there for hours and hours before me, like Tom Scar, uh, Connie. They'd been there from like half seven in the morning, which, you know, I, I definitely do not envy. I get on set and it, again, it's the same thing, the, the waiting around uh, in the cold. Obviously you could go in the building, uh, you could go in the classrooms to warm up, but the thing is, you know, you needed to be around just in case you were called on set. You know, did the makeup, did the wardrobe. It was just like a plain hoodie, I think this time. And then the wait, the wait began, the cold, dreadful wait. It was actually slightly warmer this year, but it was still really pretty cold. Hours of waiting, uh, I remember that lunch was called before I was even filming. I'd, I was there from like nine o'clock and uh, I didn't get on, on, on set, like on filming uh, until like way past lunch. So I was just sitting there for like four hours doing nothing. Again, I know that's how it works, but that doesn't mean that it didn't suck. I finally get to my filming part and it is supposed to be me, um, Dan TDM, some other guys I think from Spain, and Saffron Barker, and we are supposed to be in this this little pool of slime, which was anticipated, they had briefed us on that, uh, this, this pool of, of pink slime. And we were gonna be picking it up and splashing it around and dancing and throwing slime at the wall and it was gonna be great, you know? Where the hell did that sun go? I finally, after hours and hours, get into this tiny little pool of slime. And uh, yeah, it's cold. The slime is cold, of course it's fucking cold. I ended up sitting in the slime for I would say an hour and a half to two hours, which is a long time to be covered in this thick, heavy slime. And it was really heavy as well. And I I got soaked in it. We all did, you know, um, but I specifically, for reasons that I will talk about in, in a second, I got absolutely just covered head to toe in this slime. Out in the cold for two hours, yeah. That <laughs> was, that was, that was definitely rough. Now there was kind of this unspoken thing between myself and the team. I guess it was unspoken just in case I made an exposed video. It was basically like an unspoken promise that if I did something nuts in the slime, if I did something really cool, then I would get my moment. I would get my moment of, you know, on screen time for at least like two seconds. I just wanted two seconds out of seven minutes, you know? How arrogant of me. So I was like, you know what? You know, I, you can't expect something for nothing. I'm going all in. If I show how dedicated and committed I am to get in this front and center bit, then the editors will be like, hell yeah, this is a great shot. So I got down on my knees, all right? I scooped up all this slime while the others are dancing behind me and I pour it over my head. I'm making it fucking rain over me, man. There's just a sheet of pink slime. It goes all in my hair. It goes all over me. I'm laying down in the slime, you know, I'm doing all sorts of things. And the team sort of look at me like, 
yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get, you're gonna get your moment. They didn't say it, but they looked at me like, mm, that's, that's a really, really good shot. Once that was finally over, uh, we got to use the showers in the, uh, in the school, and, uh, <laughs> Because my hair is so bleached, the slime stained my hair. Um, I was not told that the slime was obviously made with fucking food dye. Which, of course, when you've got bleached, damaged, porous hair like I have, it, it, it stayed pink, like a pastel pink, for like two weeks before it finally shampooed out. It took a long time. I nearly had to go- I, I was very close to going to the hairdressers and saying, just cut it, just cut this, I can't get it out. You know, I didn't want to dye it dark, so I was like, this is, uh, we end up uh, emailing YouTube and being like, hey, we're gonna need some, like, compensation for this at this point because you've, you've ruined, and it was dry, it was, like, breaking off because it was made of glue. This slime was made of glue! Okay, I fucking, I don't know, I don't make slime, you know? I guess you could say that was my fault, but I do think maybe if I'd been prepped on it, maybe I wouldn't have done the slime thing, you know? So I got my hair stained, everyone's hands were like bright blue or bright green or bright yellow or, or deep pink in my case. Everyone got completely stained. Which can I just state is actually very unprofessional because I don't think anyone was briefed that they would be stained, possibly. What if someone on set had a film shoot to go to the next day or was filming a YouTube video the next day and, and, and had green hands? Like, people should have been briefed about that. People just just as a professional heads up. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. I'm in the freezing cold, feeling like absolute death. It made me ill for like about a week. I know that sounds like just an extra thing I'm piling on, but I really did have a real bad cold after that. I forgot about that. That was rough. I got completely stained, but it was okay because I was going to get my moment, right? My moment! Did... Did you miss me? Did... Did you... The... There, 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 oh, there I go. That was, that was nine hours on set, drenched in slime that you guys didn't see. Oh, actually, no, I was wrong. You do see me get covered in slime. Do you know where you see it? Yeah, that's my couple of seconds of screen time. Fuck yeah, worth it. It was just an unpleasant experience. And I don't put it down to the director. I don't put it down to many of the crew members. I believe they were told by heads up on Skype or something what to do. I don't blame them. I, I just think the whole, the whole thing was bullshit. Everyone was cold and done. By the end of the shoot, everyone was just like, I'm done. Just get me in the shower. <laughs> everyone was fed up with it. Morale was low. But I feel like we need to talk about another couple of things. I feel like this is gonna be a sticking point of the video that people pick up and, uh, and pluck out, uh, out of context perhaps. You know, I wanna state that it doesn't really irk me that much. Do I really care that I didn't get paid for the day? No, not really. But, as far as I know, at least in my experience, no creator was was compensated for their time. Uh, YouTube is not exactly like a dying industry, okay? Google is not exactly running low on funds. And you can say, well, Emma, you got to be in like the biggest YouTube video of the year, what are you talking about? But this whole being paid in exposure thing has long been a massive problem in any creative community. You know, artists getting asked to draw something for a retweet or or, or things like this, you know, um, you, you know, well, you're gonna be in a video, so that means you can take the whole day off, right? But all of these YouTubers who were there on that day, I'm talking like, you know, Tom Scar was there, Connie was there, Dan was there, OD Shadow Lady was there, Saffron Barker was there, um, tons of people were there. I don't know if they got paid or not, I can't actually confirm that, but if they weren't, that's a lot of people, uh, uh, amongst others that I, I don't really know or remember, that that would have had to take a whole day off from, from filming or, or doing their real job if they have one, I don't know. The fact is, I did YouTube Rewind on a day where I could have been here in my office writing a song or filming a video, which would generate me income, which would help me pay my rent. Of course you can say, well, you're a fucking rich YouTuber with 1.4 million subs, but anyone contributing to a service should be paid. 
unpaid work has been like a massive conversation this year. So I'm actually kind of glad that YouTube Rewind accidentally covered it. You've got loads of retail workers who weren't paid for their extra days or extra time. You've got the argument about, about the wage gap, you know, Nobody should feel like they are underpaid or not paid at all if they're if they're doing a service, if they're providing something. And we were providing our brands, right? I'm, I'm aware of how I sound right now. Okay, I know, it's disgusting. I actually got a tweet from someone saying, even in Hollywood, extras are paid now. Extras are paid. And the people that you're, you know, acting like, you know, oh, we'd love to have you on set. They're not, they're not compensated for their time which I just, you know, it just added to, to the low morale of the whole thing. It was like an underlying unsaid thing, like, I guess none of us are getting paid here. No one said it, but like, it was a vibe. I felt like it was a vibe. Maybe it's just me, money hungry, YouTuber, hey. Like I said, do I massively care? No, not really. Um, but there will be people who, who would have deserved to have been gone paid and they weren't paid, you know? Or maybe worst comes, maybe worst case scenario, Maybe some of them did get paid, and some didn't. I couldn't tell you that, but I wouldn't be fucking surprised. Just to add to the low morale of the whole thing, and this is from my experience, not necessarily from anyone else's. When you're on set for nine, ten hours, and you're left waiting around for hours and hours. Like, for instance, this year, like I said, I got there for like half eight, nine o'clock, can't remember what it was. I didn't start filming till at least like half one, two. It might have been like three by the time I started filming. I'm sitting there in the cold, waiting around, bored out my mind, not sure what to do with myself. And then uh, some big YouTubers who were going to get a ton of screen time uh, were dropped off and they, they arrived and everyone was like, oh, hi, nice to see Like everyone is pandering to them. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Like they are really big and everyone really cares about these people. They should be getting the screen time. I totally get that, and I get on with them great, whatever. But they turn up at like half 11, they're wrapped by half 12. Like they turn up, they get their wardrobe, they get their makeup, they start filming immediately the second they turn up and then they're gone. Like, that's a wrap for these guys, well done, see you later, that, that was it. And, and I'm still standing there and waiting to film. <laughs> it was nuts, like doing that in front of the people that have been here for hours tirelessly is just, it's one of the most demoralizing, insulting things. And I know it's not exclusive to YouTube. It probably happens in Hollywood all the time. My point is it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen anywhere. No one should be made to feel like less of a big deal than anyone else. YouTube is full of fragile egos, okay? Thousands of arrogant, egotistical people all on one shoot is a terrible idea. This isn't me saying, oh, I should have been treated the same. It's just like, don't make it so obvious that, that they are the big thing of the day. Like they are the massive big deal. Don't leave call sheets lying around going, you must get this moment for a gift. You must get these two for this moment. You must get this, 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 these people, these people. Don't leave those call sheets out for everyone to see. Like that's just, you know, that's not gonna make your cast happy. Yeah, this is just my experience, of course. I'm probably just moaning for no fucking reason. That's me, that's my brand. The final nail in the coffin for me, after YouTube Rewind was released and I saw my two frames, um, fine, whatever. The big finale for me, the big thing to top it all off, the icing on the cake, was, um, we were all promised that we would get emailed photos because there was a little photo shoot thing uh, to promote, uh, to promote the rewind. Everyone was gonna get photos sent to them through their partner managers and stuff. So they could tweet about it going, hey, did you see me in YouTube Rewind holding a little button? You might've seen some people on Twitter hold, holding the button. I took a photo of that, um, holding the button. Um, I never got any pictures through. Uh, other people did, uh, like Connie got them. Um, I know that because Connie's on the same management as me. Connie got forwarded all of her like promo photos that she could post about YouTube Rewind. We got no email, I got nothing, uh, which is more of just a blow to my ego really more than anything else. You know, that was more of just like an in insulting kind of thing. Um, YouTube posted a photo of me with the guys in the slime and they tagged my friend M Ford instead of me. They, they, tagged, they tagged another, I tagged another M. Um, and uh, when my manager and I emailed about all of these grievances 
for this year, saying how we felt like we'd been really betrayed and let down. Our emails got ignored completely. Um, that to me was really like the final point where I was just like, YouTube do not, it's not just me, but like they don't value me as a creator. They don't value me as a valuable asset to them. I just, the, sh the shoots made me feel unimportant and the treatment afterwards made me feel even worse. So really for me, that's like the, the, the main thing you know, forget all the cold and forget like the pink slime and, you know, forget all that. Really, it's just that they, I felt like it was a complete waste of my time, two years running. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be in it next year if, if they ask me, which they won't because they'll see this video, but I'm not gonna be a part of it. I don't care if my channel somehow miraculously blows up and I end up with like 20 million subscribers. I don't care if I'm the next fucking like Taylor Swift. I don't, I don't give a shit. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be in it. I don't... Because I know it will be exactly the same. Because I was promised this year that it wouldn't be the same as last year. And they lied. It was exactly the same, if not worse. So, um... Yeah, fuck them. Fuck YouTube is, is basically my, my thoughts on the whole thing. Um, again, this is just from my perspective. Other people might have really fucking enjoyed themselves. I don't know. But I, for one... I'm an asshole. I wanted my moment. And I didn't... I didn't get my moment, so, uh, it just sucked, it just sucked, um, I understand that there are going to be a lot of people saying, Emma, there are thousands of people who would have given anything to have been on YouTube Rewind, so many small creators who are trying to make it, who would have loved to be in your position, but until you're actually on the set where you're treated like a piece of crap, or not really spoken to, or out in the freezing cold, until you're doing that, and you feel like you might as well have not been there, then you can't say it, I promise you. The idea of YouTube Rewind sounds amazing. From the outside, when I first got invited, I was like, oh my god, YouTube Rewind. Um, I, I was like that. I was like, oh my god, I've dreamed of this moment. And it's nothing like you think it would be. It's not glamorous. Um, yeah, it sucked. So, anyway, that was this impeccably long video. My apologies. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you think that I'm just a butthurt, egotistical asshole. I'm still making videos, by the way. This isn't me, like, leaving. In fact, next year I'm actually gonna be trying to film more stuff. But YouTube Rewind can just fuck off. <laughs> Catch you later.